and welcome to Government Matters. I'm Meredith Berica, the president of the Town Council, and I'm so excited to welcome today my guest, Cheryl Bambury from the Norfolk County Sheriff's Department. Cheryl, thank you for coming today. Oh, thank you. On behalf of the Sheriff's Office, thank you for giving us this opportunity to talk about our program. I'm really excited. So one of the things that I've learned um, since I've been a counselor is that the Sheriff's Department, especially the Norfolk County Sheriff, does so much more than law enforcement. And I wanted to have you here today to let residents know about all of the programs the Sheriff's, Depar the Sheriff's Department offers. Um, and one of the most comprehensive programs that I've learned about is all the offerings we have for our senior residents. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about some of your favorite programs, and I know you've been working on these for a couple of decades, right, Cheryl? <laughs> Pretty much, yes. I've been at the jail for the, the um, 27 years, 22 working with the seniors in the community of Norfolk wow. County, the 28 cities and towns. So, so that's a long time and a lot of tenures, and I know you have a ton of experience. Yes. And I love it, every minute of it. It's just a great job. I love working with the seniors. Um, the, my favorite program would be the Are You Okay program. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, that program was started in the 1980s by a gentleman, Bruce Johnson, who was a traveling salesman. So he wanted to be able to check on his parents while he was on the road. And it developed into a nationally known program, the Are You Okay program. And um, our special sheriff, Chris Bell, found it back, oh God, in 2002. Oh, wow. We, 20 years 20, in Norfolk County. Yes, a little we, more we've that. been running it. And over the years, we've dealt with over 4,000, you know, seniors, like more or less. And we've saved or assisted uh, probably about 300. Oh, and wow. when I say save or assist, that means that we um, have helped them in some way. So how does the program work? How, how does the program work for, for seniors and how old do you have to be to subscribe and what is the mechanism by which you can help or assist seniors? So what happens is they sign up through, um, they can call our, our office or they can call their Council on Aging and get information on the program and they can call, it takes five minutes to sign up. They, it's very flexible also. So it's, um, we call five days a week, Monday through Friday, we don't call on holidays. But they get to pick a time, that, and I always say to them, when you're up and you're settled, you know, I don't want you rushing for the phone or thing. They pick the time for their call between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. And they, um, all, and the call takes 14 seconds. And they don't have to have it every day. They can have it, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday. But the beauty of it is, if they're not going to be home, they always worry, like, oh no, what happens if I forget or whatever. We take, you know, a great, we go to a great lengths to make sure that the police are the last people that we call to go check on them. First, we'll um, give them half an hour. If I can't find a senior within a half an hour, then I'll call one of the contacts that they've provided for us. And nine times out of ten, one of the contacts is they're with them or they know exactly where they are. And it's just a great program. And it's free. That is awesome. So the idea is um, a resident or a senior would give, would give the sheriff's office their phone number and they can have a check-in call every day, Monday through Friday, to just make sure that they're, they're okay. They're okay, yes. And it's very reassuring for the family and friends of the seniors because a lot of times, you know, um, I have a lot of seniors that will say to me, well, my kids check on me every day or, you know, I don't want to be a burden to anybody. You don't have to call me. Someone else needs it more than I do. And I just tell them, you know what, something, you know, it, we have plenty of room for people to be called. Like we have, you know, we call, right now we're calling about 150 a day. Wow. And I know there's more seniors in Norfolk County than 150 seniors. And they're not being a burden to anybody. And a lot of times, you know, I have the caregivers call me and sign them up. And then I always call and introduce myself and explain the program, if they have any worries or concerns with the program. That is such an exceptional service and we'll make sure, do you, can you give the number out right now? Yes. Do you have it memorized? Oh, so that of course we can give it I to do. <laughs> it's, the toll free number is 1-866-900-7865 um, or you could call 617-376-2640. But the last four numbers spell, are you okay? Oh, that's fantastic. Yes. fantastic. 
Um, and what a great service to have for people for peace of mind. And, you know, I like to remind people who say they're a burden, like, this is what community is all about. Yes. We have to take care of each other. And I know that uh, some of our el more elderly residents have put in their time taking care of lots of people, individuals and our community. And it feels good to be able to give that back to them. Oh, yes. And, you know, a lot of times it's just that personal touch, like, it is computer generated, but I monitor every call, so I listen. So if they say I'm not okay or they don't answer, and that's when I take care. Like I'll I'll call them until I can find them. I never take anything for granted because you don't want to assume that they're okay when actually they may have fallen and they're on the ground. Do you have an example? You had talked about some saves or assists. Maybe you can tell a story of how and why this program is so important. Yes. So um, one time we called a gentleman in my hometown of Quincy. And he just didn't sound great to me. So I called him back and I said, Charlie, my friend, I said, are you okay? And he said, no, I really am not. I, I can't breathe that well. I don't know what to do. And a lot of times they are by themselves. Yeah. You know, they don't want to bother their kids or their family. So we have the conversation. I said, well, you know, maybe um, we have the police come, and come over and just check you out. I said, you know, make sure your door is unlocked if that's okay, if you can do that. And then we sent the police over and they actually went over and checked on him and he had some type of a pneumonia. Oh my God. I mean, it could be anything from, um, I had a gentleman that lived in Stoughton and he said, I'm not okay and I called him back and it was pretty much he was having company come over and he was in a wheelchair and he couldn't get dressed properly. His aide oh. didn't show up. So I called the Council on Aging and they sent a gentleman over to help him get dressed, which, you know, it's all little things. Another couple couldn't find their clicker and I was like, okay, <laughs> here we go. But it's fine. We just, I said, okay, let you sat at one side of the room, let your husband sit at the other and we'll go. Put me on speaker. And we found it. Oh, that is fantastic. And like you said, it's a little, sometimes a, a life-threatening emergency and sometimes just a little thing to help people through, through their day. And it is because a lot of these people, a lot of them are very private. Um, and a lot of them don't um, have any, they've outlived their family and friends. Mm. So we could be the only call they get all day. You know, we call them on their birthday. And, you know, they're always, they're always very concerned. How did you remember it was my birthday? Well, I have it on my calendar. And then if it's a, a milestone birthday, then the sheriff will give them a call, like if they're 90 or 100 or whatever. And it's always a conversation piece for them. Oh, the sheriff called me. You know, they get all excited. So we just, we, you know, just take the extra step to make their lives a little bit more fun. Well, that sounds like you go above and beyond. And I already know the sheriff's office goes above and beyond. But, again, this program is... It's quick, it's easy, and it can be a, truly a lifesaver for our senior residents, especially those living alone. Um, oh, yes, and it's just, you know, um, a lot of times just that personal touch, them saying, I don't really feel that good, or I'm having a bad day, and I'll call them back. I spend most of my morning um, just chatting with them, you know, and it doesn't have to be a problem. You know, just be like, oh, I need to tell you something. And even with the caregivers, they'll call me if they, if they can't get in touch with their family. I have, they'll say, oh, do you know where my mom is? <laughs> yes, she went to Foxwoods with the senior center today. <laughs> so it's all, yeah. you know. That is, that is a great service, and I hope residents will, um, who are watching or listening to this will, will take, take the time to sign up um, for yourself and, and for your family. Um, and I know one of the other programs that's near and dear to you is how you connect youth in our community with senior residents. So, yes. Carol, can you tell us a little bit about some of those programs that you're so passionate about? Yes, we do a number of intergenerational programming now. And they, I, I just love the interaction between the older generation and the younger generation because they're actually the most isolated, you know, generations of these days. Of these days. So when I, I read a study on um, a class that was doing something at Pace University in New York, mm -hmm. and I loved the, like, how they were doing it. So it was just having a lot of older people working with um, the, the college students. So I said, oh, I could probably change that around a little. So I went to my high school, Quincy High, and um, they had a nursing program where the, the, the girls there were doing the nursing program. So I talked to the dean, I talked to the girls, and I got five girls or six girls, and then I went to the senior center in Quincy, and, oh no, I'm sorry, at Southern Artery, and we got six people involved there. So what happened was it's a one-on-one, -on -one. Oh, like, wow. and, and what they do is they teach them how to use their devices. So it could be um, their iPad, their, iP you know, their iPod, their cell phones, anything. And what I asked was, um, every week the, the students come with a new 
um, like app for the seniors to use, like, and like an accessibility app, or um, they could use, uh, and the, the seniors were asked to come with a question. I actually did it also at Independence Manor oh, over here in yeah, Brandon Tree, and great. they loved it. And we had one student from Archie's actually um, find an app that would translate. So yeah. we had one, and then one of the residents over at Independence Manor was deaf, so she learned how to take her iPad and her phone to the doctor. So when he was explaining things to her, she could read it and her kid could oh, give that's it amazing. show other people. So it was just, you know, and the kids would talk about um, their proms and then a lot of them are still friendly today. Um, we did it in Randolph also, but like they were talking about their proms and a couple of the girls went over and showed the seniors at um, Southern Oddity their prom dresses and their prom pictures. And then they tell them about how their proms were back in the day. Uh, one woman had never seen her great granddaughters and we've used FaceTime for the first time. She oh. never saw it. And her daughter was like, how are you doing this? How, 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 how do you know how to use that? So she got to see her two great granddaughters and they were, you know, probably a couple of months old for the first oh, time. Oh, that is another, I'm getting goosebumps with that last story, but another great way that again, building community, not only for individuals and who may be introduced to their family members, but also between younger people and, and older people in our community and building those bridges is so critical to vibrancy in our community life. Yes, it's just like bridging the gap because, you know, the students get to understand. And what I do also, I didn't mention this, is we do a sensitivity program. So what I do is I take um, the students for an hour before we even do the um, stop the classes. And they, I put um, Vaseline on their glasses. So that then I'll say to them, read me this prescription on the bottle, and they'll, you know, it's it's mimicking glaucoma, or oh, I'll put wow. straws in gloves, and that mimics um, arthritis. So they, I'm like, now try to write with your left hand, which would mimic a stroke. So we go through like a couple of hours of that, and the students love it. It's a challenge, but now they understand what some seniors go through and the challenges they have every day. That is so creative. And, and they get credit. They get school credit. They get community service credit, and we give them a nice plaque at the end. So that, that is fantastic on so many levels and also integrating accessibility concerns and, and disability concerns. So Cheryl, are these programs ongoing? I know I get asked a lot from parents and students about community service opportunities and it's, sometimes it's hard to find them. So um, do you run these programs with frequency? Is it, should, should students or seniors call if they're interested? How does the program itself work? So normally what I do is I identify a school that has, a, well I was doing it but I'm changing it up now, where the senior center is close in proximity to the school so they could either walk or yep. get there at some point, like get there easily without in case the weather's bad. But it's also a little bit of a challenge because the students sometimes have after school activities or they have jobs. So it's just figuring out a schedule and letting, making that happen that works with the same, the seniors, um, the senior centers are where I'm going to be doing the program. So that takes, um, you know, I try to do it like right before school vacations or something like that, but it's a challenge. I can only do it once or twice a year, like the, probably two times a year. To coordinate, to coordinate both groups. Yeah, the both yeah. groups, yes. So it's, we do it um, five weeks, we do it one hour a week for five weeks, and then we have graduation. Oh, wow. Okay, that's fantastic. Well, we'll have to keep in touch on that program because yes, I know there will be, a, there's needs in Braintree and it would be fantastic to, to do a program absolutely. here again. Yeah. Um, that, is, that is awesome. So keeping on this theme, I know another program that we talked about briefly a while back was the Youth and Valor with our veterans. Yes. Um, so can you tell our residents about this program that another great offering from the Sheriff's Department? Okay, yeah, so the Youth in Valor program, I found a lot of times when I did a lot of programs, gentlemen wouldn't show up um, or they wouldn't interact or they just kind of sat in the background a little bit. So I thought, what can we do to get the gentlemen involved? And then I, I saw another um, program somewhere, I, I do a lot of research on <laughs> senior programs, and they had something like this, I believe it was in Virginia, so I said, oh, let me do it here. So what, what that entails is I get in touch with the local a veterans office in town and then I um, go to the school and I find out the kids that the kids that are interested in journalism, history, things like that. And what I do with that is I pair them again. So I, I meet with the students and I, I give them a little booklet on how to speak to a veteran. Like don't ask them questions that you know you wouldn't want to be asked yourself. 
dress properly, don't wear, like, don't talk slang, talk loud, be very, very respectful, which they should with all seniors anyway, but especially with the veterans. And I did this program in Weymouth, and I've done it in Quincy. And what it is is they meet for an hour, and the veterans will bring all of their, like, medals, and some of them wear their hats or their jackets, or, and the students will come and interview them. Oh, wow. And they spend about an hour and a half interviewing them, asking them all the questions that they want to know about. And a lot of times, these are stories that they're not going to read in history books to kids. They're hearing from people that have lived these stories themselves. So, and I find every time I do it, um, one of these programs, the students, some get the aspect of, oh, this, my senior really missed his family, or this one was like, oh, he got hurt, and this is how it affected him. So what we do is we have um, the vocational students at, at the school, if they have a program, do a, like a very um, sophisticated luncheon, and we oh, have wow. the missing soldiers table at there also, so we have that set up, and then the students are invited to bring their parents, and the veterans bring whoever they want, and we have a very formal luncheon, and the students get up and they read their essay on the person that they wrote about. Oh wow! And the veteran is there, so we did that in Weymouth, and like there was people who had tears in their eyes, and I was I was shocked the first time we did it that the, of how it came out. It was fabulous. And um, the students also get a plaque of recognition, and they get community service hours also. And I it's think it's so meaningful. It's so meaningful. And you know, one thing we haven't touched on yet is that all of these services that you and your team spend so much time working on are free. Absolutely, all of the programs are free. They never have to pay for anything. And, you know, that's the beauty of these programs. Because a lot of people are on limited incomes at this age, you know? Yeah, and it's, it's such, again, such a great service that I want to make sure that, and I'm thank you for being here because making sure residents know about all of these offerings. How else does the Sheriff's Office get the word out for, for residents uh, about all the programming you guys are offering? Well, we're very lucky that our sheriff goes out and does a lot of public um, speak. He does a lot of public speaking on the programs. He goes to a lot of events, and he's always bringing the programs up. Um, we're always in the paper. We try to bring it in the paper, like we have this program, like um, "Are You Okay?" will be at Bethany Church or something like that. And also, I go to all the different COAs in different cities and towns, and. Um, assisted livings, independent livings, all of that. So we try to just publicize it as much as we can. We put it in newsletters, the Council on Aging newsletters, and that's pretty much how we get it out. And doing shows like this. Yeah. Great show. Excellent. Yeah. Um, and maybe, you know, just for, for you, Cheryl, how did you get involved in this work? And I know you've been doing it for 22 years, 27 yes. years. Yeah, so, so. Um, I started off, my mom told me I was getting a job in the office at the sheriff's office. Like, she helped me get a job there. And um, the next thing you know, I was going to an academy and then for 12 weeks, and then I was um, a correctional officer for five years. And then our sheriff, um, our special sheriff, Chris Bell, heard about this program that they were doing in Plymouth. And he sent me down there to train. Um, after I interviewed for the job, he sent me down there to train, and I've been doing it ever since. But we're very lucky in Massachusetts because um, there are a lot of programs out there for seniors, but Norfolk County especially, um, our sheriff has made it possible that we have like 11, you know, programs that we do with more in the works. So it's just great, like, for the seniors in Norfolk County. Yeah, it's, I feel like it's really remarkable. And then I know I've gone to a couple of um, senior homes with you, and it, it's really meaningful to see and empowering for people to know they, they have all these options for themselves. So I, we've only talked about like three of the programs. <laughs> what know. are some of the others that you wanna do? You wanna tell residents about today? So we have another program that I think is is cute. We use the um, we go to the grammar schools, and we have the um, grammar school children make Christmas cards, or you know we try to pick a different holiday all the time. So they make the cards and they bring them to to the um, we bring them to the seniors that are shut in. So it's with Hesco and Springwell that the Meals on Wheels, pretty much. It's one of those things. And sometimes we put them in library books, people that get the library oh, books delivered. Wow. So the kids make the um, cards, and they're so cute. They're like, oh, I hope you're not lonely on Christmas, or, or like, you know, <laughs> enjoy your holiday, or what do you want for Christmas? So we put those in all the, um, the meals. And just, we always say, no glitter, because we don't want that on there. And then the sheriff 
will go to the school and go to each class, thank every, every student for, for making the cards for these people and telling, telling them how important it is. And we also bring our comfort dog, Eddie, and he'll go around, and the kids always love that for um, a, a special surprise. Oh, wow. I did, so I just learned something new. I didn't know you had a, a comfort dog oh, yes. at the Sheriff's Department. Yes, we have Eddie. He's, he's up there going around everywhere. We try to get him to like senior centers. And um, Mike Monahan is, Officer Mike Monahan is great with the dog, and he brings him everywhere. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Hospitals, hospitals anywhere. So it's great. That's excellent. Um, and I know one of the other things we haven't talked about I, is for vehicles, right? The yellow dot program. The yellow dot program. Yeah. yeah. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that because we think a lot about um, seniors in their homes or in assisted living situations, but plenty of seniors include drive. So, you know, maybe you can tell a little bit about the yellow dot program. So the yellow dot program is a nationally known program. And what it is, it's a yellow dot that's affixed to the back driver's side window. And what that does is we take a picture of the senior and they, we have a yellow envelope and we put that yellow envelope in the glove compartment. And inside that envelope, you could either, you, you can put in the information packet that will tell you, you know, who to contact first. Um, you know, what your blood type is, all of these different medical information in case you're in an accident. And what happens with that is um, there's a golden hour after an accident, they call it, and that's when you, it's, it could be a matter of life or death depending on the type of accident that you have. So any EMT, uh, fire, police, they all know if they see the yellow dot that they can go right to the glove compartment and find the picture of the person so they know who they're treating and all of their medical information that is in there. Oh, and get wow. the help that they need when they need it quicker. So how would residents, and is that only for seniors or is that for any resident? We do it for people with like, you know, slight disabilities yep. or something like that. Anyone that really drives, we don't do it with, we, we, the sheriff was, I think, thinking about the younger drivers, but right now it's just, it's basically nationally for seniors, okay. for older drivers. Yep. And how do residents get the yellow dot and get the packet of information and the photograph? Okay, so that is one of the programs. A lot of people will call me and say, oh, can I just have a yellow dot? Well, there's a little program that goes with it, and it's 10 minutes. It takes me 10 minutes to, to explain the program. The longest part of the program is when I have to um, take all the pictures. So I have a yeah. mini printer. I just take the picture on my phone, and it's a mini printer that I get fixed. Oh, and wow. a lot of the seniors will say, well, I'll put my picture on it. I can, I can put my own picture, and I'm like, oh, I've seen people put their high school picture, and I'm like, you know, <laughs> you don't look like that anymore. But... Um, so that's a great point. They can just call us at the sheriff's office okay. and request it. And what I'm doing, like I, I'm doing a bunch in Weymouth, but I do 10 at a time, 10 people at a time. Oh, wow. Different weeks, just because it, that way I have time with them, I can speak with them, and I can take their picture. Um, that is fantastic. Um, and I, I know we could go on and on about all of these incredible programs, but before we wrap up today, I do want to just ask, is there anything else you think residents should know that we haven't touched on? Best way to get in touch with you or the sheriff or, or to get more information on any of these programs? Um, I would like to say that these programs are all great. They're for anybody. And if it may not be for you, it may be for someone that you know that can't get out and find out about these programs. And, you know, the staff at the Sheriff's Office, all the people that work in the community engagement, they're all great. And they can answer the questions. They can do whatever you need. And they can get you the programs you want. That's fantastic. And, again, I want to remind residents that, you know, the Sheriff's Office, we're so lucky in Norfolk County to have Sheriff Patrick McDermott working with us. There's so much more than just law enforcement. So please um, don't feel strange about trying to contact a law enforcement agency because they're here to help and they have so much information to share and so much to offer. Um, so I think that is all the time we have today. I want to say thank you so much, Cheryl, for being with us today. And, and on behalf of um, myself, thank, please pass our thanks along to Sheriff McDermott as well. Um, and again, I'm Council President Marius Berica, and you've been watching Government Matters. We'll see you next time. <laughs>